Um, they have told us that it was targeted, and but they told us they can't tell who. We asked specifically, and they said, we'll try to get that information to you. And they got back to us a day or so later, and they said, we're sorry, we can't give you that information. But then a day later, we saw in the news that it was not targeted, or they think the whole house was targeted. But I'll cut to the chase. Yeah. Their means of death don't match. They don't match. Yeah. He doesn't have to go up the steps. Autopsies on the four students found each had multiple stab wounds. Some had defensive wounds, showing they fought with the attacker, and there was no sexual assault. Her father mentioned to me that he had just went and replaced the lock the weekend before. County Coroner Kathy Mabbott is describing the murders as personal. The arrest of 28-year-old Brian Koberger rocked the nation. Koberger studied criminal justice at an advanced level, having gotten a master's from DeSales University in Pennsylvania in 2022, according to the school there. He appears to once have posted on Reddit asking for volunteers for a research project where he was studying the criminal mind. Koberger charged with four counts of murder for the deaths of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonsalves, Zana Kernodal and Ethan Chapin on November 13th. He has not entered a plea. In the affidavit for his arrest, police say they found DNA that tied him to the crime scene. The question still lingers, who was targeted, if anyone, or were several of the victims targeted in the Idaho 4 tragedy? It seems like Stephen Gonsalves was definitely right on this one. The perpetrator, Brian Koberg, did not need to go up the stairs from the second floor to the third floor. It is understood, although it has not been confirmed by law enforcement, that Koberger must have entered through the second floor sliding glass door or window that was in ground level, which was on the second floor. I guess there's another possibility in my mind, which would be to come right through the front door if he had something to do with the ordering of the jack-in-the-box late night snack that is said to have been ordered by Xana, but we will visit that later this week. So if Brian Koberger came in through the first or second floor, he definitely did not need to go up the stairs to the third floor. We can also tell from the probable cause affidavit that Brian Koberger, in my opinion, I firmly believe he was not in the house at 1122 King Road prior to the victims arriving home from wherever they were that evening. The timeline in the probable cause affidavit is pretty tight with Brian Koberger driving around with you know his phone not being with him, being off and back at his apartment in Pullman we don't have that method of tracking him, but he was certainly seen on enough video cameras to make a very tight timeline. In my opinion, there is no way he was lying in wait in the residence. Something we can also tell from, well, not necessarily the probable cause affidavit, but another court document that has been released and that is the criminal complaint, which in Idaho is the charging document. In the criminal complaint, the charges are listed in this order, count one, felony burglary, and then count two, three, four, and five are each counts of first degree murder. Now I have to give Tom N and Gregory Worth subscriber and moderator to the channel some credit here because they were the two people who helped to bring this issue alive during a chat the other day. So Tom N said, hey, you know, my uncle's a judge and he said that the order in which the counts appear when you're talking about, you know, some same charges, murder counts, is the order in which so sadly the victims lost their lives. I thought, oh, wow, okay, well, I'm going to look into that. I'm not sure. I mean, I believe Tom, but I have to look into that like everything else. Then Gregory asked, I wonder if the order in which the counts appear on the charging document, is that the order that the initials are in 
and the tattoos that Bethany and Dylan, the surviving roommates, got to remember their roommates. So we did some scrambling around, looking things up, enlarging, sharpening pictures and all that jazz. And lo and behold, they match up exactly. The tattoos, the order of the initials go like this. M-K-X-E. Madison Kelly, Zana Ethan. In the criminal complaint, the charges go like this. The first count is felony burglary. Count two is the first count of first degree murder, Madison Mogan. Count three, the second count of first degree murder, Kelly Gonsalves. Count four, the third count of first degree murder, Zana Kernodal. And count five, the fourth count of first degree murder, Ethan Chapin. God rest their souls and I hope we find justice for the victims and peace for the families. So I spoke with three different longtime veteran reputable attorneys and just asked them this question. Hey, listen, in a criminal complaint, the order in which the counts are listed or are read, if we're talking about the same charge, hey, let's say, for example, first degree murder, how would a judge determine the order they're read in. Or maybe the question is, how would the prosecutor or the state's representative, the investigator or the police write the document that the judge would read? How would they list those charges? And all three of them said, well, it would be in the order in which they, they use different language, but they lost their lives. So I hit Google and some books and researched this. And what I found is this. A charging document, a criminal complaint, needs to have the following elements. The date in which the crime or crimes was allegedly committed, a written statement that includes all of the facts available that are specifically connected to the criminal charges and the particular state law or statute that the subject has supposedly violated. Now, as you go on and read literature about the charging document or the criminal complaint, the mentioning of the order in which the counts are listed are by classification of the crime, whether it be a misdemeanor or a felony, essentially in least serious or holding the least um, penalty to the most serious or the crime that holds the potential for the greatest penalty and or chronology or a combination of both. So obviously here, count one, felony burglary. Felony burglary compared to first degree murder is a much lesser, less serious charge. And then because we have four counts of first degree murder, those four counts are then listed in chronology. Try to work it out any other way, my friends. And hey, if you want to challenge me, please do. I always like the discussion that results from a challenge. If you think there's something else to it, let's definitely talk about it. But from the research I've done, from the experts I've talked to, and from trying to work it out literally any other way, this, in my opinion, is the only possibility. It's pretty clear. I think it's a pretty big deal to know the order in which the victims lost their lives. We're going to be talking about a lot more, a lot more detail that we can glean from the details that were released in the probable cause affidavit that go way above and beyond the details that were released in the probable cause affidavit because when you bring experts into the picture, when you connect the dots and do your research, there is a whole lot more to explore. The most important thing for this channel is, of course, to help ensure justice for the victims, Kaylee, Madison, Ethan, and Zana.
and peace for their families.